G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel once again and today I'll be doing a video where I actually rank all the teams in the AFL based on their 2019 season. So what I mean by that is not just ranking all the teams that finish high on the ladder up the top and all the bottom ones down below. I've decided to do a bit more of a different take on it and actually rank them based on how I think they went against their own expectations this year. So for an example of that, Collingwood were always gonna be a premiership contender this year, and someone like the Bulldogs were probably tipped to miss the final eight. So it might not necessarily be the case that Collingwood have a better rating than the Bulldogs, considering the Bulldogs you know, exceeded expectations this year. To be doing this little exercise, I am of course going to be using tier maker. This particular tier maker was made by someone called Jack McSomeone starting to get skeptical that is his real name, but nonetheless, thank you Jack for producing this. And uh, I've actually edited the things for once, the actual uh, categories and, um, or tiers as you will. And I'm gonna give them the following names. So the top tier, formerly S is perfection. So those teams have had an absolutely perfect year this year and they couldn't actually fault what they've produced. The next tier down will be teams that are really happy with how they went. The next one down is around the mark, so teams who probably finished around about where they were hoping, but didn't quite pull off a really satisfying season. Then there's disappointed and utter failure. So as usual guys, I am gonna have the screen recorded and you can follow me along and we'll get straight into it. So like I always do guys, I'm gonna start with our top and bottom. So the teams that had a perfect season, let's have to, we'll have to start with Richmond. How much can you really say about Richmond? They won the flag, you can't really fault any part of their season. Obviously they had their own injury issues this year. Rants barely played a game, he literally only played one game. Rewalt missed chunks, Cochin as well. There was more than that as well. But to come away with a flag, you literally cannot do any better than that and their expectations this year would have been to go very close to winning the flag. Perfect season from Richmond in that respect. Uh, some other teams that may have had a perfect season. I'm gonna have the Brisbane Lions up here. Now I know that they went out in straight sets, didn't win a final, but considering they finished I think fifth last last year, their expectations would have been really low. I think if you ask most fans going into this year, finals would have been an absolute dream. So for them to finish top two and beat some really good teams this year, that's a perfect season from where they're at and they've got a really good base to launch into future premiership attacks in the, in the following seasons. So to contrast those teams, let's have a look at the teams who had an utter failure of a season. This one won't surprise you. I'm gonna say Melbourne, obviously. Many tipped them to be a premiership smoky this year. In fact, some people considered them the best team going into this season. Obviously, we all know what happened. They had a disastrous year. Uh, I think it all started in the preseason with a bad injury run, L lack of preseasons for sure. And then maybe it crept into their, you know, their mentality as well, because they really just didn't have a good season. So uh, to finish bottom two is an utter failure. You couldn't really ask for much worse than that. Now, the other team I have as an utter failure would be the Adelaide Crows. And I wonder if that is too harsh, but I'll explain why I think that. Obviously they made the grand final two years ago. Yes, they did lose some players, but all in all, they have a very, very mature list. They had the second best injury run or one of the best injury runs this year. And they had the second list oldest list in the competition. So you really, really need to be aiming higher than 12th or 13th or whatever they finished this year. It might've been 11th, I'm not sure. But as far as I'm concerned, that is an utter failure, cause especially when you factor in, they've got about seven or eight players requesting trades because the culture is so bad. They've also ditched their senior coach. It really couldn't get that much worse for Adelaide this year. One saving grace for them is that they have Carlton's first round of this year, which has been pushed back to pick four. That's pretty much the only benefit of this season for the Crows. Uh, mind you, that was done on a for trade they did last year. So all in all, a shocking year for the Crows. All right, so let's start to fill in the middle. Um, I'm gonna go with a team that would be really happy with this season and I'll say Geelong. Obviously they finished fifth last year and went out in week one to Melbourne. So people were starting to question, is the run over? Do they really need to flip over the list? try and get um, you know another sort of generation of talent coming through. They managed to finish top of the ladder and also expose that second tier quite effectively this year. I think they'll be pretty happy with what they were able to achieve. Obviously they didn't come home with the premiership which is probably what stops them uh, getting perfection. But honestly their fans would must be pretty proud of the effort. You know they were very close to making the grand final and nearly beat Richmond in a classic prelim. So 
All in all, you have to be really happy with their season, it has to be said. A team that will be quite disappointed with their season, I'm gonna have the Gold Coast Suns. Now, I won't say utter failure because of everything that happened to them last year, they lost their two co-captains and a host of other really important players. And obviously they went three and four to start the year, were unlucky to not to be four and O. Oh. Yes, they did lose 19 games in a row, but honestly, with the way the cards are stacked against them at the moment, or at least this year, I wouldn't say they were an utter failure. They just would probably be disappointed they didn't snatch a few more wins considering the start they had. My beloved Eagles are a side that I will probably have around the mark this year. Obviously, they were the reigning premiers this year, and honestly, like the only way they were gonna have a really satisfactory season is they were gonna contend for a premiership. Now, they were, third, they were every chance of finishing third going to the last round had a bit of a capitulation. Yes, you could say that was pretty disappointing result, but I think to finish fifth with a 15 win season, all in all, they were around the mark where they want to be. They wouldn't quite be happy, but I think disappointing would be a bit harsh to rate their season. I thought all in all, it was a fairly good back up to the premiership year and I honestly I still think the Eagles will be around the mark next year for premiership contention. Another team that will be disappointed, the other WA team will be Fremantle. Now I say disappointed, I know maybe they're not rated you know externally in the AFL community. I think with the players that they had at their disposal this year, they really wanted to push finals and I think we saw glimpses of that side in the first half of the year and then they obviously got derailed by injuries. Hogan, Tabana and Pierce, all those guys sort of missed a lot of football and that I think really brought them down. The fact they were disappointed with their season is evidenced by the fact that they sacked Ross Lyon. Losing a couple of players like Brad Hill in particular and even Ed Langdon who was a solid contributor this year, it really does hurt Fremantle, um, but I'll be interested to see how they go from here. This might be unpopular, but I'm also gonna lump Carlton in this disappointed group. Now, everyone knows how they went in the second half of the year under Teague and would say that was pretty good, but to go one and 10 or one and 11 or whatever it was, under Brendan Bolton, we can't, that has to be included in this assessment. They did probably slightly improve on last year, it has to be said, uh, especially the way they played in the second half of the year. But all in all, to finish third last isn't so much of an improvement that they were around the mark for their expectations. I'd say they'll overall be disappointed with they finished. The Giants are a side that I has to be said will be really happy with their season. Once the heartache of the grand final belting starts to wear off, if it ever does, they can only see look back on their season and say it was success they, success. they did take the next step this year, which is something they failed to do in previous years. They've made a number of prelims, I think three prelims. This is the first time they made it all the way to the big dance. So I know they finished sixth. Um, they probably wasted some opportunities in the latter half of the year to really command for that top four spot. All in all though, to make a grand final, they've got something really decent out of this year, which is grand final experience. So. Um, I have to think they are really happy with how this season went. Now, this might be a little generous, but I'm gonna say the dogs pretty much had a perfect season for where they're at right now. I know that's, it might be a little contentious. They did win the flag a couple of years ago, so we knew we know they are capable, but you know, for where they finished last year, I think they were in the bottom four last year, and to um, finish the way they did in the home and away season to finish seventh, disappointing in week one of the finals, but to get more finals experience into what is definitely a young side. They've got mature talent, but there's still a lot of youth in there. Um, a lot of guys who haven't played finals in that team. I think if you'd offered finals to any Bulldog supporter at the start of the year, they would have been pretty stoked with that. Port Adelaide is another side around the mark for me. Now, I think they um, probably, I know that externally, they've sort of been putting out that they wanted to make finals, but that's probably actually their internal expectation as well. But from an outsider looking in, considering the players they lost going into this year, they needed outside speed and they lost Pollock and Wingard, which hurt. Um, but to take three first rounders and have you know a lot of young players come into the side and they didn't really drop off in quality too much. I actually think Port Adelaide had a season around the mark of what we what we would expect from them. And I think that's reflected by the fact that they didn't sack Hinkley personally. So there's enough positives from Port Adelaide this year in terms of development of young players to stop them being totally disappointed in my opinion. The pair, if you're watching this, you can probably elaborate a little bit on that. North Melbourne, I'm gonna say disappointed. They loaded up for you know a finals tilt this year. We obviously know they went really hard for Andrew Gaff last year. It didn't come off, but they went for Dom Tyson, Aaron Hall, Jared Pollock, Jasper Pittard as well. Only the latter two really contributed. I really like Pollock as a player. I think that was a good pickup. But you know, they are quite a mature list. They've got some youth, but it's a mature list. So to not make the finals, it's pretty disappointing from where I sit. Um, I think it really boils down to that horrid start of the year. They got the change in the coach and then they started playing how more we would expect them to play, or at least I did in my opinion. 
Um, but all in all, a disappointing season for North. Sydney, maybe this is a little bit harsh as well, but I'll say they're disappointed to finish bottom four. We've always known Sydney as this really ultra competitive side. I think they've only missed the finals twice in the last like, yeah, 10 years, maybe even 15 years or something like that. Buddy Franklin didn't get on the park much and they are going through a transitional phase. They've got a couple of different generations of talent at the moment in the same side. They're trying to fuse together. So not, not really a disaster to you in my opinion at all, but to, to go from finals to bottom four, on the whole, probably disappointed, although, you know, they'll probably be pretty happy with the draft pick they've got at the moment. Hawthorne, I'm gonna say around the mark. Uh, again, that might sound maybe a little bit negative on Hawthorne, because they obviously missed the finals, but with Tom Mitchell going down to the preseason, breaking his leg, I know I haven't always been the biggest fan of Tom Mitchell's game uh, on this channel, but I do think he's an important player for that midfield nonetheless. He is still a very good player. So to have him break his leg, finals was always going to be tough, especially the way they finished the season last year. Um, they kind of were, you know, slumped out pretty disappointingly. All in all, I think they'll reflect on this season um, as though it was probably around the mark, not too disappointing. And I think that's been reflected in some of Clarkson's comments that it's really about the bigger picture this year and making finals wasn't necessarily the be all and end all for the Hawks. So I think they'll be okay with how this season went. Essendon, I'm gonna say we're around the mark this year as well. Now, the only thing stopping them from being really happy with you know making finals um, was some of the, the nature of their losses were really alarming. And I think that's been reflected in, you know, Wusher being turfed with one year to go. I don't really know the circumstances of that. I think it's a bit weird to have, you know, a succession plan, unless this was always the plan with Wisher. I think it's a bit strange, but nonetheless, there were a lot of positives for Essendon to play finals is successful in itself. But like I said, some of those alarming results to finish the year, something's a little stanky about that. So I'm gonna say that's probably, they'll probably be, you know, lukewarm about how this season went. They'll definitely want to improve in the coming years. St Kilda, I'll chuck around the mark as well. Uh, just because of the injuries they had this year. And uh, I think they did improve on their actual ladder position overall. Um, you know, some young players have really stepped up as well. You know, Gresham's already a good player, but Billings, I think, came along this one way, um, a long way this year. And someone like Hunter Clark, I've always been a fan of as well. So while, you know, there was a lot of disappointing results, they sacked their coach. Maybe I'm being a little bit generous here, but I think around the mark, that's probably where I would have expected them to finish at the start of the year. And like I said, injuries were a fair excuse in that. And Jack Steven obviously had mental health issues, so couldn't get on the park much. So, you know, all in all, they didn't have a lot go their way this season. So I can't imagine they, they'd be too disappointed with where they finished. Although I do think it probably was time for a new coach. Now I've left Collingwood to last because this is a really hard one for me. Certainly not perfection. Pretty much only a flag would have been perfection for the Maggies this year. It's hard to say that they'll be really, really happy with their season because of the way they bowed out in the prelim. I probably will have them there perhaps a little bit generously, but it can be worse. Obviously they, had, they did better than West Coast this year who I had around the mark for their expectations. Um, but obviously there's probably a bit of a bitter taste in the mouth of Collingwood fans and the club itself around the way the season ended for them. It really was a missed opportunity to try and win a flag. It's not always easy to come straight back into premiership contention after losing a grand final, as we've seen in previous years. They won a qualifying final, had the buy at a home prelim. So, you know, that all is very impressive. Um, obviously, it was just that final game that really let them down. But anyway, folks, feast your eyes on that. Tell us what you think in the comments of how I've got this uh, planned out. If you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you. It's always fun chatting with you guys about this sort of thing. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. As I always say, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe, like the video, tell a friend, tell them to tell five friends, and you can all subscribe and get me to 10K. No, but seriously, thanks for watching the video, guys, and stay tuned for even more AFL content throughout the off-season on the True Footy YouTube channel. Thanks. I'll see you next time.